Hi, Mrs. Cavelli. Ryan Jardine. We've met. Of course. I'm so sad for what has happened. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. It's Ben and Alonzo and Christy and... Uh, we've already reviewed uh, The Little Prince. This is Little Men. Yes, it's not a prequel or a sequel. Uh, and uh, I got it. I, I didn't see it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, when a superhero movie opens, only the little films open against it. Is that right? Is that, uh -huh. Of course, that makes uh, Well, Oh, I get it. I mean, but still, that makes some sense, though, right? I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What else, what else big opened this week? That's it. Did I mean, Nine that, Lives open this week? Oh, nine yes. Nine Lives does open. But they they're not screening. They didn't no. screen, so we'll, we'll try to... Uh, perhaps have a review of that. No, we are well, for oh, sure. Oh, we're talking about it next week. Because we're going to a 615 showing tonight mm -hmm. at the Grove. Come with yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, did, was, it, was that the beginning? That no, was the yeah, beginning. Yeah, so now we're, in, now, we're, now we're in. Now we're into what the flick. Okay, All right, so, so Little Men. Little Christy. Men is from Iris Sachs, who, as Alonzo mentioned in our little Facebook Live thing earlier, also did Love is Strange. They are kind of similar, and they are about the realistic woes of New York real estate and how expensive it is to live and work there. So this time you have Greg Kinnear and Jennifer Ely. They're a married couple with a 13-year-old boy played by Theo Taplitz. They move into Greg Kinnear's father's old apartment in Brooklyn after he dies. The tenant in the dress shop beneath the apartment, played by the great Paulina Garcia of Chile, is um, a dressmaker with a 13-year-old boy of her own and the two kids really hit it off. But the parents need to figure out what's going to happen with the lease, which was really, really low for a long time for Paulina Garcia. But Greg Kinnear and his wife need a little more money now. So what's going to happen? Take a look. It's my grandfather's funeral. So I feel lost. Oh, that's OK. So you're the grandson. So how are you enjoying Brooklyn so far? I like it a lot. We have much more space. It's great. It's a lot more peaceful than Manhattan. You know, you're gonna like this neighborhood. It's come a very bohemian area. Did you draw this? Wow, Jake. It's actually getting good. I can't tell you how happy oh. I am that Jake has a new friend. You have a great kid there, but I guess you know that. My parents are married. They just don't live together. I don't understand. <laughs> Me neither. Your dad ain't good at acting. He's not that successful or anything. Maybe he can give me a couple pointers, because I want to be an actor when I grow up. The genesis of acting is seeing, understanding what makes behavior. I did it again. I did it again. You did it again. You did it again. You did it. You. 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 You did it. You did it. You did it. I didn't do it. Get out of my face. 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 Brian hasn't made any money in years. That's not my problem. We need the shop to cover its rent. <laughs> Our parents are involved in a business matter. It's getting ugly, so they're taking it out of us. Tony, you need to go home now. One of the hardest things to realize when you're a child is that your parents are people too. You understand that? They care about things. They make mistakes. If they try to do what they think is the right thing to do, does any of what I'm saying make any sense to you? Say something, Jake. Say something! Gee, thanks, Dad. That's a very encouraging story. I made it sound really boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... But it's really human yeah. and understated and real and true and subtle. Yeah, it, it's about these these two kids who find themselves stuck in the middle of this whole other conflict that has nothing to do with them about their parents. Um, and, and you're right that all boils down to kind of New York real estate and and, and, and Williamsburg specifically, where it takes place is you know increasingly expensive. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, I, I don't even want to say that it's about greed necessarily, because I think you know you can make a case that that it's not like Greg Kinnear and Jennifer Ely are, are snidely whiplash. It's right. like no, they have this property and they could be making some some cash on it. And the Kinnear's father opted not to, but they don't necessarily have that same relationship with the Paulina Garcia character. So it's not insane for them to maybe want to think about doing something else but then at the same time they have the awkwardness now of their son's friendship with her son and you know that's a the, the, I, I love the way those two kids are are, are the, the performances are great but I love the way that that, that Sachs kind of puts them in 
this very specific New York context and has them running around. It's kind of like the boy version of the world of Henry Orient, you know, like this big, this big, this big, this big city, like through, seen through the eyes of these two youngsters, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's a few blocks to them, you know, yeah. it's a couple of subway trains and a few blocks to them. Yeah. And they're really different kids, mm -hmm. but nobody ever has to spell out the fact that they're really different kids. Yes. And the fact that their friendship is so unlikely. I mean, they're both 13, they're in the same grade, it's a horrible, awkward age no matter who you are, and they both navigate it in really different ways. They're both hyper-verbal. Yes. They're both incredibly smart. But Michael Barbieri, who is Tony, who is Polina Garcia's son, is just got this enormous personality, and he's just got swagger, and he wants to be an actor. He yeah. he, he looks up to Al Pacino as, as a, a, a hero, and then Theo Taplitz as the other kid is kind of precise and kind of shy, and um, but they connect immediately, and it's lovely, and it's lovely, and it's warm, and it's true, and it's intimate, and nobody ever has to explain. Wow, like these kids are really different. Right. Who would have thought they'd be friends with each other? It just I, happens. I, it's unbelievable. I, I love it captures that way that like that like young teen boys can like charm their friends' parents. <laughs> you know, like that's just such a thing. You know, like just knowing how, what to say at dinner and like you know how to kind of carry on these conversations and and how it's a different stance and then they take them when the when the when the kids are just with other kids you know and it's a different way of, of talking to people and the adults are really good too um, there's a there's a there's a great fleeting bit from Alfred Molina here who oh, yeah. starred in Love, Love is Strange um, Paulina Garcia is so great if you guys haven't seen Gloria oh yet yeah, I was thinking about that. I, I don't know if it's this. I don't know if it's streaming or whatever, but go track down Gloria. She's so great in that and playing a really different kind of character here, and still just captivating. And I is this her first role in English? Oh, I wouldn't think so. I don't know. She's been around for a long time. If you are a Chilean film fan, please yes. let us know. But yeah, there's um, sh there's so many shades to this character, and you mm. think she's just kind of sweet uh -huh. and kind of lovely. But she gets these little passive aggressive digs in. Yeah. And there's something simmering beneath the surface there that like reveals itself from time to time and it's fascinating to watch. It, it, it's one of those roles that reminds you how two dimensional roles for Latina characters in a movie like this would so often be, where they would just be they would either be sweet and docile or they would be conniving or whatever. And she and yeah, she's got a <laughs> lot of stuff going on. And, and and there's all this sort of complicated backstory where you don't know what a relationship with right. Kinnear's father they, was exactly. They to that. And, yeah. You know, um, there's a lot going on in this movie. So it, it, it as as seemingly like Small stakes, as it might be on the surface, there's there's a lot of different things, you know, and there's stuff that's happening between Kinnear and Ely, and the state of their marriage, and um, just uh, there's a lot happening here. And and and, and, and there's no judgment on it. I'm sorry, they, they didn't take any sides and didn't exactly. judge anybody for the decisions they made. Yeah, what I was going to say, Sachs, I think, is a really great sort of humanist filmmaker and really relates to people. He doesn't operate in heroes and villains, and he he lets you empathize with everybody and sort of see where they're coming from and understand that even if somebody behaves poorly, they have some rationale for it, or there's some reason why they think it's the right thing to do. And the, and the ending, which I'm, I will not say how it all turns out, is, is really bittersweet. Yeah. It ends kind of perfectly, it's very bittersweet. Yes, Ben, you were gonna say something. I was gonna say a couple things. Please, <laughs> say, say a couple things. I wanna, I like, I don't know what Greg Kinnear's doing, but I, I like what he's doing. Do you? Uh, <laughs> what's seem, he doing that you like? He doesn't seem interested in being a big star. And maybe, maybe if he sees this, he'd be like, no, I'm desperately trying to be a big star, and <laughs> I'd like to be, but I, I don't know, I just like his way. He's ta he does interesting character work. He does work, interesting yeah. character work, and he, you don't see him. He doesn't, he's not, he doesn't do a, tr you know, he could, I'm sure he could do more promotion than he does because you don't see him. Right. And you get the feeling he likes being an actor and doing interesting work. And yeah. he's playing an actor in this movie. Oh, that's, that's true, right. yeah, doing, yeah. Doing The Seagull, which uh, is a very small <laughs> little production of it. And I love Jennifer Ely. I've always yeah. loved her. I, I wish that we saw more of her in the movies. The Gloria that you're talking about, which I haven't seen, that's uh -huh. not a remake of No, no, not that Gloria. This, this is about a, a divorce, a middle-aged divorced woman trying to... Uh, like putting herself out in the dating scene again. No. And trying to learn There's how to live a, life on her not, own. Not the not Cassavetes, no. 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 But they do play the, the and, song Gloria in it. Uh, yeah. and, oh, uh, not not G L O R I A, but like the, uh, Laura, 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 Laura Brannigan. Brannigan. Laura yeah. Brannigan. But the Spanish version. Tragically uh, not with us anymore. True. Um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, oddly, uh, I think, did George Roy Hill's favorite movie. It's World of Henry Orion? The World of Henry Orion. Wow. The guy who did Butch Cassidy and Sting. There you go. I, I, don't get me started on George Roy Hill. He is one of my favorite totally underrated good. American auteurs that no one talks about. Right. Because ben his, talks about him. 
I, well, because his, <laughs> he's he's like Howard Hawks in that his, 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 he's all over the place genre-wise. This is the guy who made Thoroughly Modern Millie and Slapshot and Slaughterhouse-Five. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he's, he, he runs the table, and I, I think he's underrated, and because he had Parkinson's for the la latter part of his life, didn't make public appearances, so he didn't have that sort of last wave of film festival appearances and retrospectives that I think would have... everybody would have fed him appropriately. Yeah, that would have kind of cemented his status, and so now that he's gone, I kind of, I always feel the need to bang the George Roy Hill drum whenever I can. But back to Little Men, yeah, it's sorry. great. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's very good. So, Alonzo <laughs> cannot give it a number. Yes, because I, I, I've, I've worked with Ira, I, I know him from doing Outfest stuff, so, uh, and if I didn't like the movie, I just wouldn't have talked about it. So you know, but I, I do, yeah, and I I, like I want to I want to I want to champion it, but I just I, I can't give it a score. Sometimes we have friends, yes. so I'll say an eight for us. Okay, and uh, go see it. Yeah, it's a good, charming, little, smart movie. It is good alternative programming to Suicide Squad. Yes, and on the tomato meter, it is ninety four on the tomato meter. Well, all right. Meter. Da, da, da. Bye.